Now, Nexius says government efforts to help the economy are based on a faulty premise. He says, quote, the prescription will fail because the diagnosis is wrong. Edmund Phelps is a Nobel Prize winner for economics and a current currently working as a professor at Columbia University. Uh, is it, professor Phelps, you said that in an editorial a while back. I want to make clear here. You're not in the E21 camp, are you? Uh, the, this group of Republican economists who are criticizing Ben Bernanke and his quantitative easing two plan. Absolutely not. And I'm not in the progressive camp either. Uh, I finally figured out why the progressives are against QE2. The, they're afraid that the Fed will get the inflation rate back up to 2% and get the price level back on its higher track where they wanted it before. And then the progressives will not be able to say anymore that there's a deficiency of demand. Hmm. And then they'll be out of business. So they're terrified that the Fed will succeed. So with this criticism, this open letter, though, to, to Ben Bernanke uh, yeah. today, I mean, do you think that this $600 billion bond buying program is going to distort financial markets and make uh, exit? More yeah, well, of course, th th that criticism comes from the other end of the spectrum, right. from the right. And I, I think it springs from an idea, which by now we ought to know is false, that uh, the market is always right. Mm -hmm. That the market has set, the, set correctly the unemployment rate given the lousy economic policies that we have. And if we want to achieve any progress in lowering unemployment, we've got to improve our basic underlying policies. And I think that's, that's wrong. First of all, we know that the market is not always right. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, secondly, it's, it's too simple because the Fed made a mistake about a year ago. It took its eye off the ball. It took its foot off the gas. And, and the assets in, on the Fed's balance sheet began to shrink. That means the liquid assets held by the public began to shrink dollar for dollar. And then what happened? The inflation rate began to slip down from 2% to 1%. And, and now that's a, that's a terrible mistake. The first responsibility of the Fed is price stability. Right. It's supposed to keep on that track. So the Fed, I don't see that the Fed has any choice if it's serious about living up to its mandate. I don't see it has any other choice but to get the price level back up and get the inflation rate and, and, get, and get the price level inflating at the rate of 2% per annum. And yet, I mean, you're not wholeheartedly supporting QE2 because you actually wanted a trillion dollars. You right. wanted more shock yeah, and awe. I, right. I, I, well, I do mean I'm not dead sure whether it should be a half a trillion or a trillion. I was uh, somewhat joking when I said uh, uh, a, a trillion might be better because I'm so tired of these gestures. You know, mm -hmm. the politicians love to make a little gesture and then go home, and that's it for the day. Uh, and I, I was afraid that a half a trillion might be too little, and, and, and I still think it could be too little. You this do. is all guesswork. We don't know. Just as they didn't know before when they did two trillion, and that was a pretty insightful guess, it just happened to be a little bit short. Uh, likewise, they could be wrong this time about a half a trillion. We don't really know, but I think the experiment should go forward because, as I say, the Fed has failed yeah. in its first responsibility, which is price stability. We're back now with Nobel Prize winning economist Edmund Phelps from Columbia University. Uh, I, I want to pick it up here uh, on the same thing with QE2, but but the area of, of expertise for you, yeah, which is yeah. employment. I mean, the Fed is mandated to deal with this. Does QE2 create jobs? It could. It might. I would guess that it probably will. Uh, it's not going to be a dazzling job creator. <clears throat> I think the main point to be made here is that the, the rise of the price level in the early months will get firms excited and draw them into producing more. That's true. But then, you know, money wages will come chasing along. And at the end of the day, prices won't be any higher in relation to money wages approximately speaking, than they were before. So you only get, at best, a transient, a vanishing boost to employment. But that's not so bad when we're bouncing along the trough and, and, and we, we, we could use a little lift. The other point I want to make is uh, something that I haven't seen anywhere. Uh, shame on these academic economists. Uh, this, we're not talking about a helicopter drop of money. We're talking mm -hmm. about an exchange in which the Federal Reserve offers money 
in return for government bonds. So people who say, you know, this is the, the, the Fed just dumping buckets of cash and yeah. helicopter Ben style, right. he's being misread, you think? Totally. Uh, the technique is to buy government bonds. What happens then? Well, when the, either of two things, the, um, the interest that the Fed earns on the government bonds it has acquired goes right back to the Treasury. So this is an interest outlay that the Treasury doesn't have to make anymore. The only net cost to the Treasury is the interest it has to pay to the public, not the interest it has to pay to another branch of government. So the tax burden is going to be lower. And, and uh, also with, with, uh, with, with, with earning assets, with, with the public not so rich in earning assets, maybe more of them will be impelled to go back to work. I'm not suggesting they're all sitting there voluntarily right, they're, not they're, employed, they're, but some of them are. The, the, the criticism, though, is that, that there is a, a lack of jobs. I mean, do you, you, do you buy that uh, easier money, supportive equities, the wealth effect will then get people to actually hire? I mean, it, it sounds like a lot of people say more consolidation is going to happen within corporations, and that's not necessarily going to create the openings. I mean, can the Fed live up to its mandate of job creation, or does that come back to the government? The Fed, Fed, the Fed could never uh, satisfy two mandates at once. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's only um, in, in a make-believe world that uh, the Fed can uh, both deliver high employment and deliver uh, stability at the price level around a targeted path. Uh, it, it can't. It can It can it, it could never. It could never. It can never, and will never be able with its monetary tool to deliver uh, high employment. It, it can. It can try to step in to avert disasters. It can play a cushioning function, but it can't do heavy lifting. So, uh, but I, I, with regard to the employment effects of, of, of this measure, we're going to get a transient boost to output and mm -hmm. presumably employment, and and, uh, and 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 I think the the in, re, in effect, effectively retiring some of that public debt from the hands of the public. That's also. Uh, a good thing, and we'll, we'll do a little bit to uh, boost employment. And you say 9.6 percent unemployment. That's that's where employment should be right now, given the fundamentals of the economy. Uh, no, I think the uh, I don't recall ever being quite that optimistic. I, I, I think the I think that the fundamentals will take us to about seven percent, maybe seven and a half. That'll uh, be and, the new. And if normal we want, that's the new normal in my book. And uh, if we want to do better than better than, of course, we do. We're, we're going to have to be in, inventive and thoughtful about new structural measures mm -hmm. uh, to um, stimulate business investment. And, that's good, and, and the best thing we can do in that area is uh, to stimulate innovation. By the way, uh, I'm very excited mm -hmm. uh, these past couple of weeks because I just learned that Italy is going to uh, study uh, my proposal for a first national bank of innovation. Your innovation in fund. Yes, they are yes, taking that up. Yes, it's happening in Italy, I think. <laughs> you th well, that will be interesting, interesting <laughs> right. to check. We're going to have to check in with you on that. Yeah, right. All right. Thank you so much, Thank Professor you, Margaret. Fels, for all your, all your time today.